Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and last time we talked about a conspiracy theory we learned from a TikToker that ancient Rome didn't exist, hence I have basically figured out that I had wasted half of my life studying all of these things about ancient Rome. Well get ready to waste the other half of my life because apparently the Middle Ages never existed. I mean, the things you learn on the internet. I mean, next we're gonna learn that feudal Japan didn't exist, hence wasting another half of my life. I mean, how many halves do I have? Well, you see, the one about ancient Rome was from a TikToker, so I mean, you know. But this one is actually from an established, like it even has, this theory, even has its own Wikipedia page. And I've got to say, I heard about this theory and then I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna prepare, I'm not gonna study and then make a video. I wanna, I wanna discover this theory with you. So let's go check out the Wikipedia page together and let's see what this theory entails. It's called, hold on to your hats, Phantom Time Hypothesis. Well, compared to ancient Rome didn't exist, they definitely have better PR. The Phantom Time Hypothesis is a historical conspiracy theory asserted by Heribert Illig. I guess they could have removed the IG there. First published in 1991, it hypothesizes a conspiracy by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, Pope Sylvester II and possibly the Byzantine Emperor Constantine the seventh to fabricate the Anno Domini, dating system retroactively in order to place them at the special year of AD 1000 and to rewrite history. Okay, well, hold on a second. I'm only on like line six of this theory and I can already tell you it's bullshit. This theory asserts that a certain portion, I guess, of the Middle Ages were fabricated by these three people, the Holy Roman Emperor, the Pope and the Gosh, this word Byzantine, Byzantine, I'll go for Byzantine, Emperor Constantine. This, I mean, in what planet could you ever get these three to agree on something? That already tells me this is complete bullshit. But anyways, let, let's continue. You know, I'll, give, I'll respect it enough to read it. Let's continue. Illig believed that this was achieved through the alteration, misrepresentation and forgery of documentary and physical evidence. A I'll get back to this one, I already have something to say, but I'll get back to this one. I want to see really the meat and bones of this theory. So, the Middle Ages didn't exist. According to this scenario, the entire Carolingian period, including the figure of Charlemagne, is a fabrication. Charlemagne is such a heavily documented historical figure that made you really didn't pick... I mean, why did you pick this one? So, the figure of Charlemagne is a fabrication with a phantom time of 297 years, from AD 614 to 911, added to the early Middle Ages. So basically what they are saying is that there is a, a gap of 300 years and a whole chunk of the Middle Ages never existed. So my other question is, does this only apply to Europe or are we supposed to remove the entirety of the Tang Dynasty in China as well? Because I mean, or maybe it was an international thing, like they got in touch with the emperors of China of the time and they said, hey, you need to fabricate an entire dynasty as well because evidence contradicts the hypothesis and it failed to gain the support of historians. But let me give you a massive spoiler right off the bat, just to get your mind at ease. Yes, the Middle Ages existed, including those 297 years. Do you want to know another thing that actually exists in the world? Climate change, which connects to the sponsor of this video. And as you know, it's no secret that I tend to work with sponsors a lot on this platform, but the sponsor for today, let me tell you, I'm really excited to be working with them. I'm talking about REN. REN is an organization that is taking action on climate change. Each one of us with our modern lifestyle is emitting CO2 and making more environmentally friendly choices is imperative. On REN's website you can calculate how much carbon you emit and which activities have the greatest impact and then you can offset your emissions by supporting countless projects through a monthly subscription. It's all very simple and transparent. The funds raised go directly to support a variety of projects from tree planting to mineral weathering and as a supporter you will not only get updates but you will also see the trees you're planting. One project that I particularly liked involves providing clean burning fuels and cook stoves for refugees in Uganda. This project has the potential to provide clean cooking fuel for over 1 million refugees and prevent thousands of acres of deforestation each year. It prevents deforestation, reduces cooking emissions, improves quality of life for refugees and lowers risk of lung damage. And that's why I got so excited about working with REN when they contacted me and having this collaboration because this organization keeps things 
things real with tangible results. So what are you waiting for? Offset your carbon footprint on REN. The first 100 people to sign up through the link in the description box will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you so much for caring for the environment and big thanks to REN for sponsoring my video. Welcome back. Now, before we dismantle this, let's learn a little bit more about Mr. Illig, shall we? Illig was born, are we sure about that? In Bavaria, I'm not even gonna try and read that. He was active in an association dedicated to Immanuel Velikovsky, catastrophism, catastrophism, today my English is broken, and historical revisionism, the okay. Is that the level boss? No, no, really, let's give it a try. Gesellschaft zur, zur, zur. Gesellschaft zur Rekonstruktion. Gesellschaft zur Rekonstruktion der Menschheit und Naturgeschichte. Okay, take me half an hour. Gesellschaft zur Rekonstruktion der Menschheit und Naturgeschichte. Okay, now say that ten times. I probably butchered it. I tried. In English, Society for the Reconstruction of Human and Natural History. Since 1995, he has worked as a publisher and author under his own publishing company. Okay. Also, he, had, he actually had his own journal called Leaps in Time. So, he was very dedicated to this idea. Before focusing on the early medieval period, Illig published various proposals for revised chronologies of prehistory and of ancient Egypt. Okay, so basically he took a shot of several possibilities and then saw what stuck. His proposal received prominent coverage in German popular media in the 1990s. Well, here is the thing, I mean, he calls it the invented Middle Ages and I mean, I guess Middle Ages is an invented term. People in the medieval period didn't consider themselves to be medieval to them. They weren't living in the Middle Ages, they were living in the present. So Middle Ages really makes sense only when you look at it from our current perspective. We live in year 2000 blah blah, the ancient period was in zero blah blah, and so anything in between, we call it from our perspective the medieval period, because it's in the middle, from our perspective. But I guess you could imagine that in 2000 years, in year 4023, people might refer to our current era as the medieval period. And also we could say that the very definition of the word medieval, or the Middle Ages, changes depending on who you're talking to. For some people it's from year 1000 to the 1400s, in which case what we would normally refer to as the early medieval period wouldn't be medieval anyways. So you could call it late antiquity in that case, some people used to use the term the Dark Ages, so of course, you know, terminology changes and shifts and perhaps it will change again in the future. For other people, anything from the 5th century to the 15th century, so a full on a thousand years, is considered the Middle Ages. So instead of just having the High Middle Ages and the Late Middle Ages, you have Early Medieval, High Medieval, Low Medieval. But regardless of how you call it, what this gentleman is really saying is that those full-on 300 years never existed. Any person who takes a history or archaeology seriously as subject always has to be ready to change his ideas. I'm not saying that what we teach and what we learn in school when it comes to history and the, and the past is 100% correct all of the time or that we know everything. We don't and oftentimes we have to rewrite things because when new evidence arrives we need to be open-minded enough to not get stuck into what tradition teaches us but we need to be ready to challenge everything that we have learned. And some of the great ideas that we have got, that we do believe and support, together with both academia and science, some of these would have been considered crazy. So it's not that I'm saying that anything that contradicts the established historiographical archive should be rejected per se. What I'm saying is that what we learn and what we teach about the past, whether it be the medieval period or the classical period, is based on all sorts of different kinds of evidence, whether it be iconographic, pictographical, literary, statuary, archaeological, linguistic, you name it. The first problem that I have here is something that tends to be sort of a common denominator among a lot of conspiracy theories. The level of usually international coordination that bodies that created or fabricated this supposed evidence would need to have. I mean, look at the very beginning when, when we read it, I kind of skipped over, but I need to, I said I would have gone back to it. When Mr. Illig is explaining how this, again, international coordinated fabrication, it was achieved through the alteration, misrepresentation and forgery of documentary and physical evidence. Now, 
little Occam razor here. Even if we're talking about very powerful men, we are talking about very powerful men of the past, how could they have fabricated enough evidence to fool not only historians, archaeologists, scientists of the present, so from their point of view of the future, using technology that they didn't know existed, such as carbon dating, for example? How could they have anticipated all the different ways that our archaeologists, scientists and historians would have had, because a complicated lie would be built on a maze of millions of interconnected and intertwined lies. All of these built in different languages among different people, because I mean, even if these countries, these three, I mean, we have the Pope, of course, it's always the Catholic Church, isn't it? The Pope, the Holy Roman Emperor and Emperor Constantine, even if they did it perfectly for their own countries, how could you go to every single possible country in Europe, get everything perfectly coordinated, make zero mistakes because really all you need is one mistake and also considering all the things that happened during that period the evolution of armor the way helmets changed that is one of the main problems that i have with many conspiracy theories which is really the basis when they say oh all governments in the world got together to do this, this and that. Illig's claims include that there is a scarcity of archaeological evidence that can be reliably dated to the period of AD 614 to 911. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, so just because you don't have a huge amount of archaeological evidence, which, but then again, you do have enough, in my opinion, but even if you don't have an enormous amount of archaeological evidence, it doesn't mean, oh, then these 300 years surely didn't happen. That the dating methods used for such recent periods, radiometry, dendrochronology, are inaccurate. What the heck is dendrochronology? Oh, tree ring dating, just say tree ring dating, we're crying out loud, dendrochronology. So basically, again, he's saying, not one, two entire branches of science are wrong, that medieval historians rely too much on written sources. Well, written sources on their own, I would understand, but written sources in conjunction with material evidence, that's pretty strong. That the presence of Romanesque architecture in 10th century Western Europe suggests that the Roman era was not as long ago as conventionally thought, and that is Romanesque architecture <laughs> just to burst, not to burst anyone's bubble, but the Romanesque architecture is still used today. I mean, look at fascist buildings of the 1940s and look at, heck, even contemporary American buildings use Romanesque architecture. So it's not like medieval people were forbidden to use columns, for crying out loud, and regardless, you know, one of the characteristics of the ancient Roman Empire is that they left a lot of architecture. And since they were really good at building things to last, these things still exist. So as they exist now, they existed in the medieval period. So this one really, you can have two answers to this one. First, yes, they had a lot of Roman architecture because it was still standing as it is standing today, a further thousand years afterwards. I mean, look at all the roads. And secondly, again, yes, some of the buildings would have been built in the medieval period, but that's because even today we build buildings sometimes that look like Roman architecture. That at the time of the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in AD 1582, there should have been a discrepancy of 13 days between the Julian calendar and the real or tropical calendar, when the astronomers and mathematicians working for Pope Gregory the 13th had found that the civil calendar needed to be adjusted by only 10 days. From this, Ligan concluded that the AD era had counted roughly three centuries, which never existed. Okay, of all of these, I want to say this is the most clever one. It's wrong, but it's clever. Let me explain why. The first thing that we can use to sort of combat this, this whole idea is that we can use what are called um, astronomy or astronomical sightings. In other words, solar eclipses. If phantom time was really a thing, it would have distorted of 300 years solar eclipses. In other words, the solar eclipses that we know happened in a specific time wouldn't have been sighted by the people of that time according to a calendar. That would be a discrepancy, time distortion, if you will. Say Pliny the Elder, for example, he reported a solar eclipse in 59 AD. We know that that eclipse happened. If the phantom theory hypothesis was right, then Pliny the Elder would have been wrong by at least 300 years. And yet, he was right. Very similar thing when it comes to Halley's Comet from ancient China. There is no phantom time to be added. 
Is there any other conspiracy theory you would like me to cover on a video? If so, let me know in the comments below and also don't forget to share this video. Don't forget either to check out the link in the description box to take advantage of the amazing offer Ren has for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and if you're not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Hello.